Hello, Dr. G here. I was reading a report of cancer cases in children in the United Kingdom. The data compared the incidence of cancer in 1998 with the most recent data, which was obtained in 2014. During that time, cancer cases in children increased by 40%, or in absolute terms, there were 1,300 more cases of cancer per year in the United Kingdom in 2014 compared to 1998. We can speculate all day long about why this is occurring, but it is very sad. One of the reasons that it's so sad is that most of our treatments for any type of cancer are very toxic. Things like radiation, chemotherapy, and surgery. All of these can have devastating side effects that will affect these children throughout their usually shortened lives. Today, I wanna to tell you about my own speculation as to why this might be occurring. Now, let's think about what has changed significantly in those 16 years. We could consider the diet. In my opinion, it hasn't changed that much. The average person had already switched to a processed food diet by 1998. Toxic exposures are another possible cause, chemicals, air pollution, but I don't think they have changed that much either. Yes, in general, I believe our environment seems to get gradually worse each year, but I don't think the environment was very clean in 1998 or the time right before that. Another factor is that kids get more vaccines now than they did then, and the vaccines contain new toxic materials. They call these adjuvants, and maybe that could be part of the problem, and that should be studied. But what has changed exponentially is our exposures to various types of radiation. This includes electric and magnetic field fields from our electrified environment. There's a vast body of research that shows various types of cell disruptions that occur with these exposures. We've also had an exponential increase in wireless frequencies that are used in our modern tech crap. And this is called radio frequency radiation. This includes the cell towers, Wi-Fi, cell phones, smart meters, baby monitors, fitness monitors, broadcast towers, and many other wireless devices. Our cars, engines communicate with the other systems wirelessly, and many of the gadgets in our home communicate wirelessly. Now let's face it, the average consumer wants Wi-Fi and cell phone reception everywhere they go. Take the Buick TV commercial I saw last year, an old lady bragging that she could post on her blog from her car because she has Wi-Fi in the car. To me, that's another lemming going off the cliff. But I have to admit, I'm posting for my Buick right now. Not. There's been an explosion of cell towers, Wi-Fi, smart meters, and other forms of wireless exposure that we all get over this 16 year interim. And unfortunately, it continues to increase at an accelerating pace. The other big factor that's increased tremendously is artificial light exposure. For kids, light emitting devices are the new pacifiers. I could see where in the future you could be reported to Child Protection Services if your kid is deprived of their video game or their movie or their cartoon from their handheld device. Another factor that's gotten much worse over the same 16 years is our population's insulation from the surface of the earth. Kids today are never going barefoot and they're even rarely outdoors anymore. When you're ungrounded, it creates a situation where you have an excess of positive charge in the body, which is pro-inflammatory. And inflammation is one of the presumed causes or contributors to cancer. Yes, cancer can take us out of the game, and it's really sad when it happens to a child. But 
here's the good point. My prediction is that someday there will be a child that through cancerous changes will find a cell nucleus DNA or mitochondrial DNA mutation that allows her to survive the man-made electromagnetic fields, the fake light, and being ungrounded. She will then likely pass this survival mechanism on to some of her children. This is evolution. She'll thrive on the skyscraper lifestyle and so will her descendants. The problem is the rest of us will be diseased or dead. And that's over 6 billion people. And let's face it, we may not even get that one surviving child, which will mean possibly the extinction of humans. I believe you must take a stand to protect your children from the disruption that these modern changes cause. I know it's hard. And one of the reasons it's hard is there's a huge financial push to expand, expand these biological disruptive forces by both industry and our extremely intelligent governments. For the modern medical system, including the drug companies, cancer is a financial boon for those that treat it. Just like the wireless and light technologies are a financial boon to the tech companies. And when you have lots of money, like the drug companies and the tech companies, you can isolate yourself and buy yourself an island where you're not exposed to all this stuff. But I believe you're not going to be able to get out of the ongoing sixth extinction that's caused by mankind. My advice, move back to nature and her ways before it's too late. Primitive kids did have a high mortality rate, but they didn't have cancer. I believe we're smart enough to figure this out, but I'm afraid it won't come soon enough because of the special interests, and our species may not survive unless we wise up fast. And that's the purpose of this video, to get you thinking about how you can wise up and not follow your fellow lemmings off the cliff. This is Dr. G. Thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of health information, please subscribe to our channel.